What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we gotta talk about what happened on this year's Crown Jewel, man. Not gonna lie to you, I definitely enjoyed this show. There were some matches and things that take took place on this show that were really, really enjoyable, man. They really showed out, in my opinion, this year for Crown Jewel. They put on a pretty good show. The crowd there for the matches that they were really invested in, they brought the energy. The Saudi Arabia crowd, they definitely brought the energy on some of these matches that they were really invested in. And there was, you know, a match that actually surprised me in how things actually turned out. We're going to talk about um, that as well. Some surprise finishes. I was not 100% correct on my predictions. There were some, some uh, finishes that I did not see coming. And how they played out. So we're going to talk about all of that, man. This was a very enjoyable show. And, you know, we appreciate everyone that showed up on YouTube and on Twitch. Shout out to True Billy and Dub, man. They were able to make it and be a part of this. And we had a great time on the Inner Clutch page. So thank y'all so much that was there watching live. But we got to get into this. Got to get my thoughts and opinions on what happened. And also talk about potentially what could happen going forward. Forward. So we got to start with the very first match of the show the OG bloodline versus the new bloodline OG bloodline consisting of course of Roman Reigns Jay Uso and Jimmy Uso going against Tama Tonga uh, Jacob Fatu and Solo Sokoa I was not expecting this match to start off first but they did and um, obviously the crowd was lit uh, especially for uh, Roman Reigns when he came out there, and especially for Jay Uso. They were going crazy during this entrance, singing this theme music. It's just a cool thing to see how far how uh, far along Jay has come as uh, one of the top guys in the company. They loved him. Crowd went crazy for him when he came out there. Earlier in the match, um, there was a situation where at the beginning of the match, Roman you know, allow Jay to go in there and start things off. And when it was a situation where he could have tagged, because the crowd was chanting, OTC, they wanted Roman to get into the match. So Roman puts his hand out. Jay has the opportunity to tag him, but he doesn't. Instead, Jay ends up tagging uh, in Jimmy. And Roman's looking at him like, what are you doing? So you still see some issues there. and And that's the thing. Um, I guess you can say the overall perception or the overall idea of, in this match is the new bloodline, they're all on one page. They're all on the same page. But the OG bloodline, there's still some issues of mistrust, and I can appreciate that. They shouldn't all just instantly be on the same page because, once again, this is years of issues that they've had. But everyone all follows solo lead. They all look out for each other. It's not the same thing with the OG bloodline. So instantly there, you knew we was going to see some cracks um, throughout the match. Um, at one point, it looked like there may have been a botched uh, pin uh, pinfall. I want to say Roman, uh, was a, Roman ended up getting covered. I think it was by Solo, if I'm not mistaken. And I think Jimmy was supposed to break it up. Like, he ended up getting hit with a Samoan spike. I think Jimmy was supposed to break it up in enough time. But Jimmy didn't get there as quick as he should. So the ref counts one, two. He looks like he's about to count three. Like, it's like he holds, he hesitates on the three for Jimmy to kind of get into place. So it was kind of a timing issue there. But the story is... That solo spike is, you know, they're building it up as something devastating. And we do end up seeing the effects of that. At one point, the referee ends up getting knocked out. As you know, in a bloodline match, a referee's definitely getting knocked out. Then all chaos ensues. And ultimately, and this is the crazy thing, even though they're going back and forth with each other, all the, you know, the Jimmy and Jay, that you know, they're going back and forth with Jacob and 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 Tamatonga or whatnot. They didn't really cheat, honestly. So what happens next, which is really crazy, not only did Solo end up hitting Roman Reigns 
with I want to say it was like three Samoan spikes. It was like he hit one Samoan spike earlier in the match, and then he hit him with like two other extra Samoan spikes as he's, you know, being incapacitated in the middle of the ring. Then as he does that, he goes for the pin. The referee comes to, counts the one, two, and the three, bro. And when that happened, the crowd, it's like the energy of the crowd just disappeared. I was shocked. I was in shock that they lost. I was shocked at how they lost. Because when you really think about it, I kind of figured that they probably would have Roman get pinned here to set up a match going into war games. I kind of figured that. I just didn't think it was going to be multiple Samoan spikes and then that was it. Like it was it was kind of like a like a a dominating situation. I thought maybe it would be some outside interference like the referee gets knocked down like they did. Then weaponry start getting involved. I thought it was going to be more or less of that cuz they were trying to set them up and you know pretty much pack them up you know, after the match, but I thought during the match while the referee's down, I thought that was going to be more or less the case, but it wasn't. So it was kind of the cleanest possible win you can get, and he beat him. They didn't cheat. He beat him. It's just the ref got knocked down, but he beat him. And crazy finish. I was not expecting him to get hit with multiple Samoan spikes and then lose. So that was shocking to me. Them losing? No. It's the way they lost. So, I mean, to be honest with you, Ro Solo has a pinfall victory over Roman. That's crazy. So after that, Roman, he starts to come to, and he's still clawing at at um, at Solo. Like, nah, bro, you, nah, you not the fucking tribal chief. So now they start jumping up on him. They start, they get him out the ring. They about to put him through the table. They're moving some furniture around. And all of a sudden, Jimmy and uh, Jay try to even up the odds, but the numbers game is too much. They get them back in the ring. They end up putting a chair around uh, Jimmy uh, Jay's neck. You already know what that means. Somebody's going to run to the under turnbuckle and pretty much send my boy Jay to the upper room. But you hear the crowd chanting Sammy, and the crowd gets what they want. Sammy comes down to the ring. You hear the crowd chanting Sammy's name. You're trying to figure out, is Sammy going to align himself with Solo? Because we did see him talking to Solo on Monday Night Raw. Is Sammy going to align himself with Solo? What's going to happen here? You see Solo talking to him. Nah, be with us. Not with them. Come on, be with us. And it looks like Sammy's about to align with him. He goes in for the hug on Solo. Only to flip him over and then that's when chaos ensues. Everybody starts brawling and the only person left in the ring is Solo. Everybody's in a corner. You have Roman in one corner. You have Sammy in another corner. You have Jimmy in one corner. You have Jay in one corner. They're surrounding him. It looks like he's about to be done. Roman goes for the spear. Sammy goes for the halluva kick, but he ends up like Solo ends up ducking them both and Sammy ends up hitting Roman in the face with the Huluva kick as he was going for the spear and Solo rolls out the ring and that's when you start to see even more dissension from the bloodline as Jimmy starts getting mad at Sammy like what the fuck are you doing then Jay's trying to break up Sammy and Jimmy. Roman is starting. He's laying down annoyed and confused. I love it. As the bloodline look tall and just looking at the ring like, look at them. They can't even get on the same page. Look at, look, look how unstructured they are. And once again, the, old, the new bloodline comes out on top. I like that. And you know what? I'm okay with Roman doing the job for Solo, giving him the pin because you're trying to build them up as this new strong faction. So I can appreciate them getting a clean win relatively, didn't really cheat, um, and Solo got the pin. He destroyed Roman Reigns with the uh, Samoan Spike, so I can appreciate that. It sets up their match for War Games at Survivor Series. At some point, Sammy and the OG Bloodline they will finally get on one accord 
and you know be on one page so that's going to be the story for the next few weeks how can the og bloodline coexist with each other to get on one accord it's going to be very interesting but i definitely did enjoy that did the match kind of fall flat because the way it ended so abruptly i thought it was going to be a little bit built more build of a crescendo it would because it just kind of ended once he got hit with them small spikes it was over i was thinking it was gonna be something else but it didn't. That's the only drawback to the match. It just felt like it ended so abruptly. But outside of that, I like the finish. The Solo needed this win. He got a really good win. Good pinfall on Roman. They didn't really cheat, essentially. And we're going to see something. What's going to happen at War, uh, War Games. So, enjoyable opening match. Finish kind of was abrupt, but definitely enjoyable. Next, the Fatal 4 way for the Women's Tag Team Championship. Uh, you had Lash Legend. Um, teaming up with Jakar Jackson, Jay Cargill, and Bianca Belair, the defending champs, EO Sky and uh, Kyrie Sane, um, a part of Damage Control, and then you have uh, Chelsea Green and Piper Niven, uh, their team together. And honestly, this match, I didn't expect much from it. I'm not gonna lie to you, I I I really didn't expect much from the the match but it was actually enjoyable it was actually really enjoyable um it 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 exceeded my expectation these ladies went out there and they killed it they had some great tag team moves and you know they worked together with their teammates every person every team had a a a, a bit of time to show out even the crowd the Saudi Arabia crowd started chanting, this is awesome, throughout the match because they were doing some good stuff, bro. They were good, doing some good stuff. I enjoyed this way more than I expected. Um, at one point, they were building up the Last Legend versus Jay Cargill standoff. Like, you know, them finally getting into the ring and, and finally going to blows. And I definitely enjoyed that. Both of the ladies were... Throwing some very stiff shots back and forth. I like what they're doing there. They're definitely teasing Lash Legend to, uh, you know, be one of the uh, premier ladies when she gets up. To, when they finally dedicate them to the main roster fully, Le definitely Lash Legend, the way they're presenting her and having her have those moments with Jay Cargill. I definitely do see them really putting some more stock into her. So I thought that was a cool moment. Um... Uh, but ultimately, Bianca and Jade end up retaining in this match, as I expected. I didn't, I didn't see any of the other ladies winning, even though they could have maybe gave it to Damage Control if they wanted to. I didn't see uh, Chelsea uh, and Piper Niven live, li winning, and I definitely didn't see Jakara and Lash Legend winning. But overall, all the ladies showed out. They had a good showing, and I will say this. This match exceeded my expectations. Next match, match I was really looking forward to, uh, Bronson Reed versus Seth Rollins. Love, love the fact that Seth Rollins, even though he had some wild drip, as he always does, my man came out there in the Space Jam 11s. Y'all know I love me some Jordans, so the fact that my man said, you know what? I'm coming out here in the Space Jam 11s to show out. He definitely did. And maybe that was part of the reason why he won tonight. But as Seth is, uh, as Bronson Reed's coming down the ramp, Seth said, you know what? We not even going to wait till the bell start. It's on site with me and you. That's what I love to see. Crash out season, even in Saudi Arabia. Seth runs up the ramp right at Bronson Reed and they start brawling. They start brawling all the way to the ringside area all the way to the announce table and at one point Seth gets launched into the timekeeper's area and he falls on an office chair and I think that's where his back ended up getting bruised and lacerated like the side of his back because when he landed on that office chair it definitely looked like it hurt for him like hell so at that point he's already bruised and lacerated and then they finally ring the bell when they get both of them in the ring and then we we have our match. And early in the match, Bronson Reed hits a tsunami. He hits a tsunami on Seth. He goes back up to the top rope again. But Seth, being aware these tsunamis, you know, are pretty dangerous, he rolls out the way. And that's 
kind of what he was doing throughout the match. Any time that Bronson was trying to go to the top rope, he was going to move out the way, which is very, very smart. Um, <clears throat> at one point, or earlier in the match, uh, Seth hit a uh, a stomp on Bronson Reed, but Bronson Reed was able to recover re relatively quick. Then Bronson Reed, during another part of the match, hit a superplex on to Seth Rollins. Very beautiful superplex. The very uh, <laughs> a dangerous move for anybody to be taking. Um, they go back to the outside again, and it looks like Bronson Reed's about to try to get himself disqualified because he picks up the steel steps, say, you know what, fuck it, I'm just going to kill Seth Rollins. Who cares? So he runs at Seth, but Seth ends up uh, hitting his knee, and as he hits his knee, Bronson Reed falls, and his head hits the, the steel steps. So now he's kneeling on the steel steps. My boy Seth Rollins runs and hits the curb stomp to Bronson Reed on the steel steps. And then he rolls back into the ring and, you know, the ref starts counting. But ultimately, Bronson Reed gets back up like the monster that he is. And Bronson Reed, at this point, he ended up getting busted open from that. He ended up getting busted open from that. So he gets into the ring. Seth hits another curb stomp, thinking that it's going to be done. But then Bronson Reed still starts to to get up again he still starts to to stir because once again they're selling this idea that he's a monster so at this point Seth says i gotta go for broke goes to the top rope goes to the top rope and proceeds to hit bronson reed with a super stump from the top rope onto bronson reed's head for the one two and the three and seth rollins get the win I was not expecting that. I thought Bronson Reed was going to get the win here. But I will say this. <clears throat> they protected Bronson Reed. Not only did he get hit with a curb stomp early in the match. Not only did he get hit with a curb stomp on the steel steps. Got busted open. Not only did he get hit with a curb stomp again. Not only did he get hit with a super curb stomp from the top rope. It took multiple curb stomps to stop him. And after the match was done. And Seth Rollins is getting out the ring. Bronson Reed stands back up. And it was a cool visual. He's bleeding from the top of his eyebrow. And he's still like, I want more. He's telling him to get back in the ring. He want more. And Seth's like, bro, you know where to find me. I ain't hiding nowhere. You know where to find me. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think we're, we're done with Seth and Bronson Reed. I don't think we are. Because he got back up and he wanted more. So I know Seth is supposed to be in a number one contenders match on Monday Night Raw to see who's going to be the number one contender for Guthner's championship. I can see Bronson Reed attacking Seth Rollins in that match or before that match. And maybe they extend the feud into Survivor Series. Because I don't think it should be a one and done, especially the way uh, Bronson Reed got back up. And maybe they'll end up giving Bronson Reed a, his win back potentially. But, uh, yeah, nah, I, I enjoyed the match and Jack, the match was very enjoyable. And I, I love the fact, even though I would have preferred Seth losing, taking the pin here, I do see them maybe giving him his win back and Bronson still looks strong at the end of it. He still looked like a monster man's bleeding and still wants more. So he didn't stay down. So we'll see how that plays out next. Is Liv versus Nia for the Crown Jewel Championship, the Women's Crown Jewel Championship. Now, I got to be honest here. This match for me personally was the low point of the show. And the reason why I say it was a low point, I think they were okay in the match. It was an okay. They had an okay showing. But at the same time, I don't know. I just... Just wasn't as invested as I thought it was. Maybe it's because of we didn't get the potential cash in that I think a lot of fans wanted with Tiffany. And, and Tiffany does get involved in this match. Um, early in the match, uh, Liv is pretty much being dominated. She's being dominated by uh, Nia. Uh, we get a Samoan drop from the second rope. Um, 
on Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan, she tried to get a little bit of offense here and there, but Nia was turn, you know, stopping her at every turn. It wasn't until Tiffany got involved. That's when things started to switch a little bit more in Liv's favor. favor. Tiffany comes out, and it looks like she's about to cash in. And then Nia stops her. Nia is like, bro, what are you doing? Wait till the match is over. Don't do it right now. Wait till I said the match is over. So essentially, Nia was upset that she was trying to cash in on her. And ultimately, that was causing a distraction for Liv to get some type of opening. So Tiffany's like, well, fuck all that, bro. I'm the money in the bank when I can cash in on whoever I want. So Tiffany goes back to the other side of the ring with her, you know, trying to get the ref's attention to cash in. And that's when Raquel comes into the mix and stops the cash in. And then that's when Dominic comes in as well to help essentially cause a distraction. And that's how pretty much Liv wins the match. Off of Raquel and Dominic's help as we expected. And she ends up hitting her finisher on Nia. Which to be honest with you. It doesn't look good on Nia. Because Nia is so much of a bigger opponent. It doesn't look like it hurts. So when she hit her finisher on Nia. It didn't look that devastating. Because Nia is a much of a bigger opponent. It looked like Nia just kind of rolled through and died. When she hit her finisher on it. And... Liv Morgan is your first ever women's crown jewel champion with obviously the help of Dominic and Raquel. Um, you kind of knew how that was going to play out. You knew Dominic and Raquel was going to get involved. I was hoping that we did get a Tiffany cash in, but ultimately we didn't. I think they are setting that up relatively soon. It may, I don't know when it's going to happen, but Tiffany most likely is going to cash in on Naya, bro. It's happening. It's just the matter of when. The crowd wanted it, too. crowd was definitely pro-Tiffany. Um, it's just a matter of when. Um, it was it was the lowest point in the show for me, personally. Like I said, if some may like, enjoy this match more, it was okay. It only really got better once Tiffany came down there. And that's when things kind of got better. Because everything else, you kind of knew Dominic and Rhea was going to get involved. The question, not Rhea, um, Raquel, the question is, what was Tiffany going to do? That was, I think, a lot of people's interest level in this match. It's not them having the match. It was what was Tiffany actually going to do? Who was she going to cash in on? And we didn't get that. So we'll see in the upcoming weeks. But I do still have Tiffany cashing in on Nia Jax. Uh, next, Randy versus Kevin Owens. Now, this was a non-match. But it was one of the best things that happened on the show at this point. So, Randy comes down, Kevin Owens comes out first, and Kevin Owens has on a Cowboy Bob Orton shirt. Now, if you've been paying attention, Kevin Owens, for weeks since he's been feuding with Cody and Randy, he's been coming out with a Dusty Rhodes shirt on. A different Dusty Rhodes shirt on, basically the disrespect to, you know, Cody uh, father. And the same thing here, comes out with a Cowboy Bob er Orton shirt on. Just love what they're doing with Kevin Owens. Randy comes out there, crowd singing his song. Love it. It's a great moment. And Kevin Owens says, man, I'm tired of this shit. So he goes in there, gets a steel chair, starts attacking Randy Orton with the steel chair as his music was playing. And essentially, we get a non-match. Ref's trying to break it up. They're fighting. The ref eventually annoys Kevin Owens. So Kevin Owens stunners the ref. Just hits him with a stunner. Ref sells it. That's when I knew, okay, this is about to be chaos. It's about to be a crash out segment of the show. And I fucking love it. More officials start coming out there. Then Randy says, hey, bro, you forget who the fuck I am. So Randy starts back body dropping Kevin Owens on a different announce table. The table's not breaking. Even Randy picks up the steel chair, starts hitting well, he's about to start hitting uh, Kevin Owens with the steel chair, but then some other producer or whoever tries to get involved, and he throws him into the turnbuckle. So now it's all chaos. You got both general managers, Nick Aldis and Adam Pierce, trying to separate them. And my boy Randy said, hey, you know what, Adam, bro? This is not the time. And hits Adam Pierce with the RKO. Chef's kiss. Oh my God, bro. Adam Pierce got hit with the RKO. 
Total chaos. Love that spot. Then, of course, Randy um, trying to go for vintage. Randy Orton hits KO with the draping second row DDT. And then they start fighting in the crowd. There's all types of chaos. None of the officials can get a hold of the chaos. They start fighting in the crowd. Then Kevin Owens picks up like the top of one of the production crate lids. And he starts beating Randy Orton over the head with it or whatnot. Randy Orton lays on these production uh tables with cables and stuff like that kevin Owens says you know what fuck it goes to the crowd area there's like a little railing uh, uh railing stairs and then there's a railing where the crowd is sitting in that upper area and kevin owens proceeds to jump off from the railing on to Ke uh to randy orton through two tables with a beautiful elbow drop fantastic bro Fantastic. We didn't mean we didn't need a match. That shit was Chef's Kiss fantastic. They crashed out, which means we're gonna get something potentially with them at Survivor Series. Let's get it going. This shit was great. I love this. This shit was good. Now we're getting another personal feud, and I love it. I love it. We had a nice, good feud with Drew McIntyre and, and CM Punk. Now we're getting another good feud with Kevin Owens and Randy Orton because they both crashed out and we didn't get a match. So, hey, the next one got to be got it got to be some type of stipulation. No holds bar because nobody's safe. No officials are safe. I love it. This was great. Can't wait to see what them do. I can't wait to, wait to see what's going to happen next, bro. Get on a match at Survivor Series. No holds bar. Fuck it. Street fight. Whatever you want to call it. Give them a match. I'm ready for it. This was fun. For this to not be a match, this was like the highlight of the show at the point. At this point. But then the show picks up even more with LA Knight versus Carmelo Hayes versus Andrade for the United States Championship match. This shit was great. Up to this point. This match right here, best match of the night. Best wrestling match of the night. These guys damn near stole the show. I, I couldn't even really take notes because it was just, it was fast paced, great action. Everyone showed out. Everyone showed out. LA Knight was hella over. Man, they were doing the whole yes, the yell punches. This was great. There was a lot of reversals and counters. A lot of aerial moves countered into other moves. Carmelo Hayes showed out tonight. Showed out. At one point, uh, LA Knight goes to the top rope, hits the double elbow on to Carmelo and Andrade. And I will say this, man. The way this match was paced and how well these three guys work with each other, I want to see it again. I want to see how this match plays out again with these guys. Because they showed out. This finish was really good. Really, really good. LA Knight was able to hit both of them with the BFT at the same time. So it looked like, like I believe Andrade ended up catching LA Knight. And you know how they do like the, I, I like to call it the spinning of the dough where the wrestler is kind of rotating around the other wrestler's uh, top of his head. So they're rotating around, and as they're as um, Carmelo's about to come back around, and I don't know what type of move he was going to hit, LA Knight catches them in mid of the rotation and hits both of them at the same time with the BFT. Such a great way to finish the match. That shit was very creative. I like that. My Me saying it doesn't do it justice. Go watch this match. This was great. This was great. Fantastic. I'm glad they put this on the show. I want to see it again. I want to see these guys go out again one more time. A three, uh, another a triple threat match with these guys. They work well with each other. All three of them. Fantastic. Love this match. Up to this point, this was the best match of the show. Dead ass. Best wrestling match on the show for sure at this point. And we get into the main event with Cody versus Gunther. 
And I love the fact they made mention as Cody's walking down the ramp on the graphic, they made mention that Cody has eliminated Gunther in the 2023 and in the 2024 Royal Rumble. I'm glad they mentioned that because that is a very important factor in their their rivalry. I love that. Early in the match, there was a, some great mat wrestling between both of these individuals. They were really showing their techno techno like their technical ability in the wrestling ring. Love that. I love the fact that they were countering each other. You know, Cody trying to watch out from getting caught into the um, the chokehold, but also um, Gunther trying to watch out for the crossroads. So they're kind of at like a stalemate, filling each other out, trying to figure out who's going to make the first mistake. I can appreciate that. And it shows these are the top guys on both brands, Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. These are the top guys. And they showed it. And I appreciate that. This atmosphere for this match was a big fight feel. This crowd was more, more electric, I think, in this match than every match in this show. They were electric the entire time. This was such a fun match, fun atmosphere, big, uh, atmosphere, big fight feel. And these are the top guys in the company giving us a good one. Um, at one point, Cody hits the crossroads uh, to create separation from Gunther. So he hit one crossroads to create separation from Gunther. Then at another point in the match, Cody hits a second crossroads after Gunther misses a clothesline. So like I said, the entire time, Gunther's trying to choke him out because that's what he wants to do. He doesn't want to pin him with his power, uh, power bomb uh, clothesline combination. He wants to choke him out. So that's what he's always trying to go for. And Cody's trying to go for the trifecta with the crossroads. So towards the finish, Cody goes up top. And you know he does, he likes to do the Cody cutter from the top rope. He goes up top, but Gunther counter, counters it as Cody's falling back into the chokehold, the sleeper hole. So at this point, Cody, he's in a bad situation. He jumped right into it. And he was already caught in it earlier in the match, and he had to fight out of it. So this one looked like it, this may end him right here. But Cody being smart and being aware, he ends up using his momentum and rolls over while he's still in the chokehold onto uh on, on Gunther. Essentially kind of similar to what he did with Brock Lesnar a few years back, where he used his momentum to get the pin off uh, on on to on the Brock Lesnar, the same thing he did here with Gunther. He used his momentum and rolled over. Gunther still has him in a chokehold, but his shoulders is pinned to the mat. The ref counts it one, two, three, and Cody wins by using his brain. He outsmarted him. He knew that was going to be something he goes for, so he used his momentum to get his shoulders onto the mat for the win. And it worked. I was shocked. I thought for a fact Gunther was winning. But no. Cody beat him. He beat him. No interference. No shenanigans. No Kevin Owens running. He just beat him. Fair and square. That was crazy. I was not expecting that. It was a fun match. Really, really great match. I enjoyed that. And I, I hope to see them wrestle again at some point. That was really good. But Cody has come out on top. Once again, Gunther's been pinned. Well, it wasn't like a traditional pin per se, you know, but he ended up getting pinned off of, you know, essentially a reversal of sorts. It wasn't like a traditional one, two, three pin. He just kind of pinned his shoulders down with obviously him holding him in the chokehold. So it wasn't a traditional pin per se, but he did pin, he did pin Gunther in a sense. Technically, it's just how he did it. Either way, Gunther doesn't lose much. I was not expecting that at all. But they gave Cody the win. And after the match, Gunther went up to him. He shook Cody's hand. And he was like, hey, hey we're going to have to run this back again. We're going we're gonna to have to run this back one more time because you barely got away. It wasn't a, like I said, it wasn't a, oh, he pinned him like Sammy. Sammy pinned Gunther. He pinned him. This was, he pinned him, but it was more of a, reversal type situation that's kind of the same thing he did when Cody faced Brock 
and how he got the pin, but it wasn't really like a traditional pin. So that's why that feud kept going on. Same thing here. Don't know when we'll see this again, but I enjoyed it. I was very surprised how it played out. But yeah, man, and this was Crown Jewel. I, like I said at the beginning of the review, man, I enjoyed it. I think it picked up towards the end of the show for sure. But I definitely enjoyed this show. I had to give it a, uh, a rating on a scale of 1 to 10. I give it a solid 8. The only match I really wasn't the biggest fan of was the Liv and Nia match. match. Everything else was pretty good. The only other issue I probably have is how the Bloodline match ended the way it did so abruptly. I thought it was going to be a little bit more of a build. I don't have a problem with Solo getting the pin there because, I mean... You really set up the idea that now they got to have war games because it's not over. Um, but just how abrupt it was. But other than that, this was a fun PLE. I love what they're doing with these uh, these ladies and gents. And I'm looking forward to seeing how things going to play out leading into Survivor Series, which is just a few weeks away. It's always something to say when the Saudi shows actually turn out to be pretty entertaining. I will say that. So comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite match on the show. What you rate the show on a scale of 1 to 10. And what are you guys most looking forward to the most in the future. But I appreciate all love support. Y'all showing on the channel. Roll to 150K. Appreciate y'all keeping with me. See you on the next one. Peace.